Welcome to Miriam's Online Academy. In this video, we're going to go over some pro tips that will help enhance your performance of John Legend's All of Me. So let's get started. All right, so here's pro tip number one. Keep a steady pulse through the whole piece. Now, especially in pop music, it's really, really important to do this. And in, in all kinds of music, it's important. But in pop music or in... Um, covers like this because as a pianist we are a solo instrument we don't have the voice we don't have the band nothing is um, helping us to keep the band or the music moving forward so we have to do it ourselves and it's really noticeable if we don't keep a steady pulse so let's go to the chorus and I'll give you an example so right here this is our chorus Here's what it would sound like if I played it without a steady pulse. So you can recognize that it's the piece but it just doesn't have that continuity and that flow that you're really aiming for. So a real professional or a real polished way to play a piece is to make sure that you can play it all the way through with no stopping and completely steady. Now there's a couple ways that you can uh, do that. First, you can just count out loud for yourself. You could go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now that takes a little bit of coordination. So if you're not such a fan of doing it yourself, you can have something like a metronome help you. And you can set it to any speed you want. Maybe start with a slower speed at first so that it's easier to keep it steady. And then get faster and faster and faster until you're at the speed that you would like to be. And so this is about how fast I like to play it. there you go, that's pro tip number one. All right, here's your second pro tip. When you're playing a song that has a melody and a harmony, meaning we have a part that you sing and a part that kind of accompanies the singer, you always want to play the melody louder than the harmony. So let's go back to the chorus and show you an example of that. So back to our chorus for pro tip number two. So here's what it would sound like if I did not play the harmony softer than the melody. And you can hear there's kind of like a battle going on between these two lines. Our harmony, which is in the left line, and our melody, which is in the right hand line. So what we want to do now is we want to play this left hand very softly. So we're going to play it just alone for a second. I'm going to start from where the H is. And we go. And it never gets louder. It always stays at that uh, at that dynamic so that our melody we can play out a little bit louder than we would think and it would balance itself the softer harmony and the louder melody make for a balanced and nice sounding piece There you go, that's pro tip number two. Pro tip number three, be familiar with the form. So, especially for pop songs like this, there's a lot of complicated stuff going on. We've got verses, we've got choruses, we've got bridges, codas, signs, all these things. Now, I kind of went over this already in my breakdown video, which you can check out. Um, but we'll just do a little quick overview here. We have our intro 
right here for the first four bars. And then we're into the first verse. This is where the singer starts singing. Okay, onto the second page, still the first verse. Then where our sign is, is the beginning of our chorus. We keep playing, we keep playing all the way through the chorus onto page four, where we have the end of our repeat sign with a first ending. That first ending means we go back to the first page where our repeat sign was and play the second verse. So we would play the second verse all the way through, all the way through. We would play this chorus where the sign is, continue, 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 until we get to this first ending again and we skip it and do the second ending. Then when we've done the second ending, we go on to page five. This is the kind of like interlude part where we play um, this. And then at the end of this section, it says DS al coda. This means back to the sign until the coda. So we have to flip back again till we get to our sign. Remember that our sign was the chorus section. So we're basically playing the chorus again all the way through until the coda sign. So this time on page four, we don't play the first ending. We don't play the second ending. We go to this coda and we skip forward to the coda sign. And then once you've reached the coda, you've made it. Now you just have to flip all the way to the end and you've finished. This is something that you should definitely review before you perform this piece. Um, sometimes we forget to do that while we're practicing because we just practice sections or we're working on specific things and it doesn't occur to us that we might actually have to practice page flipping. But that's something very real that we have to do all the time and so it's a really good idea to look over this before you start. All right, and our last pro tip, number four, embellish the arrangement with added harmony notes and melodic flourishes. So this is a bit of a fancy pro tip. When you get really comfortable with this piece, you're gonna find that there might be some holes or you might hear some things that it just doesn't sound quite the way you want it to sound or maybe not quite as fancy as the original piece. So what you can do is you can embellish it. You can make it a little more complex. So a great example of that is just in the beginning. We're gonna start right here where the singer starts. And we have this. And so it's pretty straightforward. You've got the bass line harmony and you have exactly what the singer does. Now, if you can handle it and if you wanna do a little bit more, this is what you can do. You can take a look at our guitar chords at the top. So they outline the harmony for us. An E5 basically means an E chord without the middle note. C major seven would be a major chord with the seventh on top. G triad, D5, etc. And if you wanna learn more about those sorts of things, you can definitely check out our videos on the channel. Okay, but let's assume you already know something about chords. Now we're going to take those chords and we're going to add them in and kind of create an extra beat. So remember in our intro how we had this rhythm? Well, we're gonna take that same rhythm and just add it into our left hand with our chords. embellish a little and that will kind of make it more interesting. Um, you might even want to do it simple the first verse and then embellish the second. That's another way of doing it. And then in addition, so after you've kind of added some fun chords, another idea that you could do is you can add some embellishments in the right hand. So where my red star is is kind of where I like to add some embellishments. I'm going to start from here though and show you what I'd like to do. Okay. 
And so you'll see, I'm looking at the chords again. I've got my A minor triad for uh, this, this part right here. And so instead of playing just that simple uh, melody, I'm gonna add some eighth notes and maybe a couple sixteenth notes even. Um, and I'm just playing through chords, uh, sorry, notes in the A minor chord. And then after that, I noticed that we have thirds here. So why don't I just add a couple thirds in the next few notes and that might sound nice too. So even just simple things like that can really make your piece sound fancier. Even if you're not doing something like necessarily more difficult, you're just adding some stuff. And those are my pro tips for all of me. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you check out my performance video and my breakdown video for this song. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Miriam's Online Academy. Check back here for more videos and don't forget to subscribe below.